Let's fill in these screw holes on the backing for the barn door, like the champs we are. So the first step in this process was actually creating the holes that we would need to fill. So of course I went ahead and added some more screws to the backing just to give it a little extra support because like I've said in my other videos, the last thing we want to do is save money by DIY just to have this barn door crashing down on us in the middle of the night. So for all the chants out there who may be more auditory than visual or who are unfortunately just hopping in on part 5, what I did first was pre-drill a hole and countersink that hole to make sure there was no splitting in my backing and then I inserted the screw. To make sure my screws were providing support, I used pieces of tape for previous parts of this project to mark off where the studs were so that I could drill straight into them. And then with a little support check, we're free to move on to the next part of this process. So remember when I said that I countersinked my holes? Well, this is part of the reason why I chose to countersink my holes. Using my drill press bit on my drill, I went ahead and drilled out some hole fillers. This is what they look like. And don't worry, if you don't own this tool and you don't plan on buying one because you may not use it for anything else, stick around because of course, like the champ you are, I'm going to show you just how you can accomplish filling in your screw holes without this tool. And just as a side note, off camera, I cut these wooden hole fillers down to size. After getting these wooden hole fillers cut down to size, I then returned back inside and started the next part of this process, which was adding a little bit of glue to the back of these hole fillers and placing them into the hole. And while you watch option number one of filling in these screw holes, I just want to go ahead and remind you to like this video if it helps you in any way and subscribe because it really helps my channel. Thank you in advance. And after showing you option number one of using my hole punch drill bit, for those of you who would like to save money and not buy this tool, I'm going to show you just how I use wood filler in order to accomplish the same goal of filling in my screw holes. And for those of you who have already seen part two of this barn door series, don't worry, this time I actually chose a wood filler that is stainable. And it's just that simple, after putting together the wood filler mix and making sure that it was at a consistency that was proper for this project, I went ahead and started inserting it into some of the holes so I can show you a second option for if you don't want to buy any new tools. And while you continue to watch me use wood filler in order to show you a second option for filling in screw holes, I just want to go ahead and remind you again to like this video if it helps you in any way and to subscribe to my channel because I can't wait to have you around for part number six of my barn door series. After applying the wood filler and letting it dry for around three hours, I then went in with an 80 grit sandpaper and started to sand down the wood filler. And if I'm being honest, part of the reason that I do these DIYs is so that I teach you an easier way to do things. So if I could change one thing about the order of my process, I would have waited to polyurethane my backing until after this part of the process. And I'm sure someone out there who knows a little bit more about polyurethane or staining things is probably thinking to themselves, they could have told me that. And I meet you with a... Uh, you should have, because I encourage you every video to comment below. So if there's something that I'm doing and you see that I could be doing it better, please comment and let me know. And just in case I haven't said it enough during this barn door series, the number one rule when we DIY with Champ is safety. So make sure you apply those goggles because now that I've shown you that it's possible to sand down this wood filler just using your hands, I'm going to move on to using some of my power tools, but feel free to continue doing it manually, that's fine too. And after using my 80 grit sandpaper, I then move on to 180. I have no idea why I inserted that picture, I just felt like it was necessary. You're welcome. And again, this is just a view of me showing you that it's possible to hand sand the wood filler using 180 grit sandpaper. However, I will move on to using my power tool to accomplish this part of the process. 
And I know throughout this video I only showed me working on one section of the backing. However, I did this to every screw hole on the backing. Following sanding down both the wood filler as well as the wooden caps, I went ahead and used a damp cloth to wipe down the backing to get off all the excess debris. And whether you chose to use option number one or option number two, after you have a sanded, clean, and dry surface, it's now time to start applying your stain or paint if that's what you've chosen to use on your project. With safety always being our number one priority when we DIY with Champ, coming in a close second is saving money. However, on my next project, I will make sure that I use a better stain because coming in a very close third is saving time when I DIY and this stain took so many passovers that I definitely wouldn't choose to use it again. After applying five coats of this stain, We've just simply DIY filled in our screw holes, like the champs we are, and I'm super proud of you. See you on part number six of this Born Door series.